So this will be the last lecture over chapter five. Uh, so a little bit more about stereochemistry and chirality. Uh, so last major topic we'll cover is this concept known as resolution. Whoa. Uh, so basically this is just an experimental method for separating enantiomers. So if you remember, enantiomers are very difficult to separate and purify because they have exactly the same physical properties. So you can't use physical methods like crystallization or distillation to separate them. Uh, so, for example, if we started with a 50-50 mixture of these two molecules, so it's a racemic mixture. Uh, so the stereochemistry of this first one, one, two, three, so this would be R. So hopefully this is easy for you by now to see that why that, that would be R. Because uh, that's priority one, two, and three, and that's clockwise, and four is on the dashed line, so the arrow stays. And here we flip the hydrogen and the methyl. We kept the benzene ring and the NH2 the same. Flip two groups, so that would change the stereochemistry. So this would have to be S. So we got a 50-50 mixture of that. And what we're gonna do is a chemical reaction. So we're gonna take that amine and we're gonna react it with the carboxylic acid. So at this point, I would not expect you to know how they will react. I'll just tell you what's gonna go on, what's gonna happen. So basically that nitrogen is gonna take off the hydrogen because amines are bases and carboxylic acids are acids, so that's going to do an acid-base reaction. And those two electrons will become a lone pair. And so this would do the same. And so, so basically what we have is a, a flask. And we have both of these compounds in it. And then we're going to add this compound, but we're adding only the R isomer of the carboxylic acid. <clears throat> Okay, so when these, when these react, we're just going to do an acid-base reaction, so nitrogen is going to take a hydrogen, and then you're going to make... So now that nitrogen has three hydrogens, so it's positively charged. And the carboxylic acid lost a hydrogen, so now that's negatively charged. So you make a salt. And so the amine was the R that you started with, and the acid, carboxylic acid, was the R isomer, so you made the R R salt. And in the bottom reaction, and all of this is going on in the same flask because we're mixing all, because the flask originally contained both amines and we're adding the carboxylic acid to it. So when the S amine reacts, same, same reaction, nitrogen picks up a hydrogen, so it becomes positively charged. So we would make that. So this amine was S that we started with and the carboxylic acid was R. So here we made the SR salt and in the top reaction we made the RR salt. Well, what is the relationship between these? The RR salt and the SS salt. So both of those are in this flask right now. <clears throat> both of them are. <clears throat> well, the, the RR and SS, um, <clears throat> one sterile center is the same and the other is opposite, so that would be diastereomers. So these are diastereomers of each other. Well, diastereomers have different physical properties. Whereas these have the same physical properties. So since the diastereomers have different physical properties, then they can be separated by physical methods. So what may happen, for example, in this reaction, so maybe we're doing this reaction in um, some solvent. Uh, so what may happen, for example, is maybe the RR salt precipitates, uh, but maybe the SR salt is more soluble, or vice versa. So the point is, since they have different physical properties, maybe you can precipitate one of them and not the other one. And so now, if that's the case, then you can do a filtration. And so, um, let's see. So if you did a filtration, maybe using a flask that looks like this. 
with a funnel here on top and a piece of filter paper so then maybe since the RR precipitated out then the RR salt um, would be a solid that you filter off and the SR salt then would be a solution and so now you have separated the two so what you have to do now is you have to get rid of this thing that you added to begin with. You have to get rid of the carboxylic acid, for example, so that you can uh, free up the amine. So what you would have to do now that you have them separated, that's what that's our, Then what you would have to do is take each of these and do another chemical reaction. To get rid of the carboxylic acid that you added. So you would do that for both of these. And so then you would end up with the R-amine and the S-amine. Uh, separated from each other and so uh, now so that that pros entire process is what's called resolution and that will be one way that you can take a 50 50 mixture of chiral compound recement mixture and ultimately end up separating them too so you have to do a chemical reaction and then you have to do a separation and then you have to do another chemical reaction to get rid of the thing that you reacted with the first time and then you have your two uh, starting materials Room in antiomerically pure. So now you have pure substance. And if this was a pharmaceutical agent, for example, then you could test the R isomer and see if it has useful physiological properties. You could test the S isomer and see if it has useful physiological properties. And then the one that does would be the one obviously that you would use. And if one of them was toxic, then that would be one that you don't use. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. So that's one way to separate enantiomers. There are other methods, uh, but we won't go into them here. If you want to learn those methods, you can study chemistry in more detail. Okay, so lastly, I uh, just wanted to take a few examples um, just to see how well you're understanding this material. So what's the, what's the relationship between each of these molecules? Uh, so these two molecules, constitutional isomers, enantiomers, diastereomers, are they the same? Are they the same because they're meso, or are they conformational isomers? <clears throat> so sometimes you can do this just by visual inspection, sometimes not. Uh, so what you could do, for example, if you notice here, this is in a, um, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Well, this is, this is eclipsed, and whereas this is the zigzag chain, which means it's uh, the two methyl groups are anti to each other at the end. So if we wanted to, so if we if we rotated around this bond, then we would get the then then we would come into the eclipse conformation. So if you rotated around that bond, so the chlorine is in the front to begin with. So if you rotated 180 degrees, then it would go behind the page just like it is here. And this hydrogen is behind the page. If you rotated 180 degrees, it would come out of the page just like it is here. So if we did that rotation, you can see that um, this molecule A is exactly the same as molecule B. If you rotate it around the CC bond in molecule A, you would get molecule B, so they must be the same molecule. So those two molecules are the same. The harder way to do that would be to assign stereochemistry R and S. So this carbon is R, and this carbon is R. And if you notice, you didn't do anything to this carbon, so that carbon's not changed. So really what you have to decide is the carbon with chlorine. Is that the same or is it not? And if you assign the stereochemistry here, one, two, three, that would be counterclockwise S, but four is in the solid wedge, so you have to flip it. So that carbon is R as well. So, so if both of them are RR isomers, they must be the same. Okay, so for this molecule, so are they the same, different, and antimers? Mm -hmm. Well, they can't be meso because there's no internal plane of symmetry. 
Uh, they can't be constitutional isomers because it's exactly the same atoms attached in the same order. So we just have to decide are they enantiomers, diastereomers, or the same. So the easiest way to do that is just to sign stereochemistry. One, two, three. That's counterclockwise S. Four is horizontal. So we gotta flip it. So this is R. And this is one, two, three. That's clockwise. Four is on the dash, so the arrow stays. So that's R. They're both R. These are the same molecule. And just check and make sure I did that right. One, two, three, R, both R. Okay, if we compare these two molecules, uh, so we can see that we can just do this one by visual inspection. That's the same. And this one is opposite. So it can't be the same molecule because both chiral centers are not the same. It can't be enantiomers because enantiomers, they both have to be opposite, so they must be diastereomers. Or the hard way, if you assign stereochemistry, this is R, this is S, and one, two, three, this is S, and one, two, three, this is S, so R, S versus SR is diastereomers. Okay, so if we compare those two molecules, so the first thing to recognize is there is a plane of symmetry there. So that's a meso compound. And there's a plane of symmetry there. And so you can take this molecule and if you flip it over, you get them, if you take the molecule on the right and flip it over, you get the molecule on the left. So if you just take it and flip it over like that, you get this molecule on the left. So it's the same molecule. Of course, we. We already know it is because we've established that it's a mesial compound. So this is same because, or let's say same and mesial. Whereas these two molecules are just the same, but they're not mesial compounds. Okay, and then lastly, uh, let's see. So these two molecules, so this is a lot harder. Um, can just you could do that by visual inspection, but it's it's going to be a challenge. So the easiest way to do it is just assign stereochemistry R and S. So that's priority one, two, three. That would be counterclockwise S. Four is on the solid wedge. We flip it, so this chiral center is R. And if we do the other chiral center, that's one, that's two, that's three. One and two to three is R. Four is on the solid wedge, so you have to reverse that. So this one is S. So this is the R S isomer, where the R belongs to the carbon with the SH, and the S belongs to the carbon with the chlorine. So if we do the same thing here, um, so that's one, that's two, that's three. That is clockwise. That would be R, fours in the dash wedge, so it stays R. So the carbon with the chlorine is R. And now what about the carbon with the sulfur? Well, four is on the line, which means you need to use a Fisher projection to figure that one out. So if we stand over here and look at the molecule into the wedge. So you should see the methyl group on your left hand because the sulfur is coming out of the page on top of the paper. And the car CH3 is on the bottom of the paper. So it's going to be on your left side and the SH is going to be on your right side and the CH3 is on bottom, and the rest of the molecules on top. So, but we said the sulfur is number one. Uh, wait a minute. That's a hydrogen, sorry. That's a hydrogen there, and that's four. And we said the methyl group was number three, and all of this is number two. So that goes to the other chiral carbon. Um, okay, so this would be one, two, three. That's counterclockwise. Four is vertical. So the arrow stays, so this is S. So here the carbon with the SH is S. So we went from RS to SR. So we flip both chiral centers. So these must be, these two molecules must be enantiomers of each other. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. And that's it for chapter five.